Hello everyone, my name is David Allen Gay and thank you very much for watching this latest update for my GoFundMe initiative dated Wednesday, February 17, 2016. Today's topic is a topic I wanted to talk about for quite some time. I needed to hold off because of the sensitivity of the, uh, of the topic matter that I'm about to, to uh, disclose to you, uh, especially in light of the Christmas holiday season that we just got through. Uh, but it is something that I want to talk about and now I have an opportunity to speak about it now the emotions behind it are um, are dying down a little bit uh, it's about a subject called selective compassion and those of you who follow my blog at davidallengay.wordpress.com have an idea already of what I'm about to talk about today but for those of you who have not seen my video of my blog read my blog sorry uh, today, I'll talk about it in today's video uh, update. Um, Canada has pledged to have 25,000 Syrian refugees settle here by the end of the year. Of that 25,000, sorry, 1,150 people will settle in the Waterloo area region here in Ontario. Compare this to a report uh, from the Homeless Hub, which is an activist group here in the uh, Waterloo region, uh, regarding the homeless situation, uh, there are considerably more homeless people that have been out on the streets or at least had need of use to use the homeless shelter facilities for a temporary time than we are actually accepting refugees here. So in other words, we have more homeless people in Canada than we have Syrian refugees coming coming to this country. Uh, at the same time, uh, the Homeless Hub has also identified there are more homeless here in the region of Waterloo than we have for the 1,150 refugees, again, coming to this area. Now, the reason why I call today's topic Selective Compassion is because when Canadians first saw that picture of that dead child on the beach, they lost their minds. Uh, they opened their wallets, uh, they opened their homes, even the Prime Minister as part of his election campaign pledged to bring 25,000 25, Canadian, uh, 25,000 Syrians here to uh, Canada. Uh, but when it, came, when it comes to the homeless situation, we hear cricket chirps on a quiet summer night. In other words, we go crazy with despair and grief over, well, let's just call it for what it is. They're foreigners. They are foreigners because they are not of this country. Uh, but we don't do anything for those people who are living in this country, um, who have once paid taxes, who have once held down jobs, who have once uh, done something for the Canadian society. As a matter of fact, the response is not just indifference, it's outright scorn and hate toward these people. Uh, before I continue, I want to point out something very clear. And I should have mentioned this in the, in, the, in the beginning of the video, but it's done, it's done, so I'm going to have to say it now. I'm not a racist. I am not a bigot. I am not, I'm not a Donald Trump mentality where we have to close all the doors uh, to people who might cause trouble just because of a, an action of a few. I believe in diversity. I believe in the Canadian dream of immigration. My parents are, in fact, examples of, of a successful uh, immigrant, successful immigrant uh, story. They came to Canada with very little on their back and very little in their wallet. They got jobs. Actually, they worked more than one job. They raised children, put them through college. Uh, they owned a home. They were law-abiding citizens. And when it came time for them to retire, they are now enjoying the fruits of their labor and looking back on what to contribute to this country. I believe immigrants do contribute a great deal to the mosaic that is Canada. Even though some people who are watching this video right now might think I have a decidedly anti-immigrant bent, that's not true at all. 
the point that I'm trying to bring up today and why I use the term selective compassion is because we appear to be willing to help one group of people but we seem to forget about the very people living in our neighborhoods in our cities in this country who desperately need just as much help as Syrian refugees. I know again it's not a very popular thing to say. I know I'm going to get hate for it but I do believe in speaking my mind and as a person who has lived out in the streets who has un endured a great deal of financial uh, hardship for not working for so long full time I have to say these things because I am an actual representative now why do we have this disparity between helping one group of people and showing absolute contempt for another group of people who are just as much dire straits well we can certainly blame the way we've been cultured to review the homeless uh, how many times have you said to someone when they ask you what are you going to do today in your day off or your week off and you reply oh not much I'm just going to bum around or how many times have you been told as a child sleeping in on that Saturday morning uh, you know don't be a bum get out of bed well the, the, the negativity of homeless people is ingrained in our culture and in our language we use the word bum which also happens to be an anatomical part of our body that tends to get quite dirty after we use it uh, to describe homeless people uh -huh. so it's really not surprising that we have that sort of negative hateful view of people who live out in the streets uh, you've heard people say oh well they must have done something to deserve it look at them you know maybe if he cleaned himself off and put on some nice clothes and actually got off his ass and looked for a job and stop drinking and drug use maybe he might actually be you know in a better situation than he is right now well I'll tell you something ladies and gentlemen out there uh, in social media land and the blogosphere uh, I was one of those people I was in IT for 20 years I don't have a criminal record I owned a home I am a college graduate as a matter of fact I graduated top third of my class you know I had an 88.9 percent average during my last semester when I graduated uh, that's you know I I, I, I I worked very hard for the job that I did uh, I paid my rent and my, my, and my bills on time what happened to me wasn't drugs what happened to me wasn't slothfulness what happened to me was the economy the economy turned me in essence into an economic refugee I didn't have an income I couldn't afford a place to stay I began to couch surf and when those options began to run out I ended up on the street and I had been mugged and had my stuff stolen uh, I have had to buses I've had to sleep in a in a homeless shelter so you know and you're you're looking at me right now and you're thinking wow he's so clean shaven and immaculate with his hair how could it possibly be him what why would it happen well I'm not an exception you know this is usually how people end up on the streets uh, there is a quote done by a gentleman I can't remember his name right now though I have mentioned it in my discus commentary posts online and also on my blog at davidallengay.wordpress.com that homelessness is a state of finance and the gentleman also added people don't choose to be there it's just simply where they end up to be when they no longer have the money to pay for a home an essential service that we must have unfortunately also must be paid for by money it's not free we do not live in a communist state we live in a capitalist state so we have to pay rent or out the door we go that's the reality that the people who live in poverty and the homeless face they wonder why they get heaped on so much hate uh, 
and yet when it comes to the Syrians coming to this country 25,000 strong over the next year they are given free accommodations and they even have work lined up how is this possible that we could do this to our own sons and daughters mothers and fathers fellow citizens of this great and supposedly wealthy country called Canada if aliens were to come to this world today and see the way we behave toward the unfortunate they would be convinced that there are not one but two sentient life forms on this planet one sentient life form that has compassion and sympathy and another that has absolute and total contempt for those who do not have anything as fortunate but the truth of the matter is we are all split houses on this particular subject and I do believe that needs change it needs to change for every man and woman who lives on the street and a final po point I want to make regarding the poverty issue especially in light of the fact of the comments of, I just made just now that people might consider bigoted or racist homelessness does not discriminate unfortunately it can affect anyone regardless of one's race one's faith one's ethnicity uh, it can affect young it can affect the old it can affect men and it can certainly affect women that is my video post for today a reminder for my GoFundMe initiative that I'm not looking for a hand up a handout I'm looking for a hand up I'm not asking for one person to pay eleven thousand dollars to help me go back to school learn new employable skills so I can become more self-reliant and pay for my own place and become a contributing member of society like I was once before before the, uh, the, the Great Depression hit I am looking for 11,000 people out there in social media land and the blogosphere and all of you people watching cat videos and fan videos of your favorite computer game or a TV show to donate one dollar I am asking those same 22,000 people to donate 50 cents I am asking 110,000 people out there to donate a dime to help me get back on the road to financial recovery and self-sufficient that's all I'm asking for and I'm asking also for that same sort of compassion unconditional not selective for those people who live out on the streets in this very difficult and tough winter that's my update for today thank you very much for watching this video for my GoFundMe initiative I will be releasing another video very shortly bye for now